Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 2. We have to talk about this episode. There was so much. I am freaking out. There are so many big twists and turns and huge reveals in this episode that I'm just lost for words. This was a fantastic episode and such a good way to kind of end this storyline but also introduce some interesting concepts like speedster killer frost what is going on let's break it down all here so if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any dc tv videos later this year so you guys are going to want to stick around for this whole video because there is so much to talk about and so much to go through i wrote so many notes about this episode so first things first that reveal at the end what was that now i'm just going to quickly go over that reveal because i think most of you guys are going to be thinking about that you're going to be waiting for it i'm obviously going to talk about the other big reveals including iris coming back and speeds to kill a frost later in the video however i want to cover this straight away harrison wells what was that ending scene now what happened was basically we flash back and we're like why are we going back to the night we've seen this like the night where earth one harrison wells was killed by eobard thorn and he took over his body well you get to see thorn thorn returns you see this alternate angle he buries wells and so he covers him up you see his lightning go away and then he literally puts the dirt over him and then it waits for like a couple of seconds then suddenly out of nowhere you start getting this glowing green kind of light coming out of it and it starts to form a person and you're like what is happening here like is it an actual person that's forming and it's revealed it's earth one harrison wells so what the hell is going on now let me give you my theory so my initial theory straight away after finishing this episode like it finished literally eight minutes ago so this is fresh off my mind and my first theory is i think what has happened since all of the other worlds have been erased somehow this version the original one of prime wells has survived and he's been brought back to life because of all those wells is going away and it's some sort of ripple effect and you have to remember this is probably back in time However, it could be that this grave is just, you know, whatever we saw was just like a time lapse and you just didn't see the cut because it did seem like it was actually on the night that he got killed, he came back. So is this version of Wells going to be around? Like, has the timeline changed? So, I mean, there can be a lot of explanations as to how Wells has survived and how this version is back. However, my first theory is I think somehow with the Wells is dying last episode somehow it gave way for earth prime Wells, the original earth one Wells, to come back alive now let me know all your theories in the comments down below i'm sure we're going to do some extra bonus videos on this later in the week so please be sure to let me know your theories and we can go over all of them so super exciting now let's go to the start of the episode and obviously we'll go back to that harrison Wells stuff at the end of the video just to recap and you know give any extra thoughts on that however the start of the episode it starts on a very sad note again talking about wells this is their kind of obituary to wells and it's very emotional this is in the hall of remembrance right so you got all these past members who have gone or who have been erased from the timeline like you see excess's suit in the background that's because she was erased she didn't technically die she was just erased from this version of the timeline and then you got like a bunch of other things i couldn't really make out who specifically it was however you got to see them and they were putting nash's satchel over sort of this mannequin of him this is obviously in remembrance of nash but in the background it's very interesting in the hall of remembrance you can literally see jesse quick suit now jesse never died and jesse was never erased from the timeline so I have no idea why Jesse's suit was there. Was it because of Crisis there was some sort of change that Jesse actually died and we weren't told about? So I think they definitely put this in on purpose because they're not just going to put like any suit out and not just going to randomly get them out and put them out without actually thinking about it. So yeah, it's very interesting to see that XS's suit was there, but most importantly, Jesse Quick's suit was there and so I was kind of questioning that like why is this real why is this happening because we haven't seen Jesse die or anything so I don't know maybe something happened in crisis okay so moving on to the next thing we got Iris and Iris is able to send a message to Allegra 
and that was obviously by accident, but somehow it's been communicated from the Mirrorverse to the real world, and you get to see Iris's message that she was typing last episode backwards, that she sent to Camilla, and obviously to try and get Sing as well, and so, you know, there is some sort of connection, and this is a whole thing throughout this episode, that there is this kind of back and forth, and you have the Mirrorverse stuff, like Iris is sort of coming to grasp and coming to grips with what's going on in the Mirrorverse, and she's coming very adept to it. Okay, so Cisco is back in this episode, and Cisco plays a major role in this episode, and it was really good to see that, because he is this kind of opposite to Barry in this episode, because Barry really is the villain, because he turns into this thinker-like person, like he turns into DeVoe, basically, and he is this very calculated, almost like Sherlock Holmes, if you've ever seen the Sherlock TV show, on the BBC, he basically turns into Sherlock, you know, he's just thinking, you know, he gets the new powers of speed thinking, or super speed thinking, they refer to it in the episode as, so, he basically is thinking in a logical way, but he's not thinking in an emotional way, and so, yeah, they find out Barry has this new power due to the artificial speed force, and so Cisco is very freaked out by how smart Barry is, because Barry frequently explains how Iris was able to send a message, and that, and the fact that she's definitely developing powers in the Mirrorverse. So he's able to explain all of these things that Cisco is trying to think of, or Cisco can't do, like Cisco can't hack into the system. Barry does that thing with Eva where he totally exposes her, and it was completely inhumane, and you're like, Barry, this is kind of wrong. Like, yes, she's a villain, but is this the way to do it? And Team Flash do question him, but we'll get to that in a minute. So this is the start of the episode, and Barry is developing his speed thinking, and throughout the episode he gets stronger and stronger. Okay, so Eva and her villain associate plan the next step. I kind of forgot her name, but she was a villain of the week last season. I'll put up a picture of her on the screen right here. You guys can tell me who she was. I kind of forgot her code name, but she's back, and she's there with Eva throughout the episode, and so on the other side, you got the artificial speed force that has boosted Barry's cognition, they said, basically giving him the ability to think really fast. And so he's able to predict the unpredictable, that's something they say in the episode, and Cisco does an experiment with a quantum ball, and basically they kind of test Barry's powers, and Barry's able to say where exactly this ball is going to come back from, like where is it going to bounce off, like you're supposed to duck right here. So he has all the explanations because he's able to think forwards and he's able to interpret what stuff might happen next, but this all comes with a lot of consequences, which we'll get to in a minute. So his super speed allows him to come up with a way to get to the Mirrorverse, and that was one of the kind of cliffhangers before the adverts in the episode. And so you have Barry, and he's figuring everything out. He comes up with a bunch of boards explaining what they need to do, and basically he's just been really smart. And so on the other side, again, you have Eva versus Black Hole, and this is where you see the tachyon device that we saw in the trailer and the photos recently. And so, it turns out they're using the Tachyon device to soak in some sort of particles. I completely lost the term they used. However, it is some sort of particles that Eva has, and it's something to do with the Mirrorverse, and they need to, you know, suck it all out of her, and it's a way to track where Iris is in the Mirrorverse. So I think that's the most important thing, I don't remember the specific name. So Barry didn't use the Tachyon device to enhance his speed, he didn't need it in any way like that. They used it for a different reason, so I thought that was interesting. And so you see the return of Killer Frost, she is the backup, and it was amazing to see Frost back because she has some great moments throughout this episode. I would say she has the coolest moment in the whole episode. Yes, the world's ending is amazing and it's a great twist, however, Speeds the Frost, which we'll get to in a minute and we'll freak out about, is such a good twist, and it was completely out of the blue, not expecting that, but as soon as you saw one certain thing, you were like, oh my god, she's gonna race Barry. But going back to the warehouse scene with Eva and Team Flash, Barry lets Frost get shot, and this is shocking, however, it kind of isn't at the same point, because throughout the episode, we've seen Barry slowly getting more calculated, and there is an obvious reason why he didn't do it, because you could see in the look of his face that he was calculating it was probably more worth it to let her get hit, however, that is the wrong thing to do because she gets hurt and, you know, that is a huge risk that he risks. 
And, you know, throughout this episode, this is a running theme, like, his emotions, he needs his emotions to be the Flash, otherwise he is just not protecting anyone, he's not thinking right, he is thinking just analytically like he was, like, the thinker or something, and basically, how is he better, and how is he more humane than, you know, even Eva at this point, like, I told you, Barry is basically the villain of the episode. And so, we go back and we see Frost, and she's dying because this light energy that is basically within inside of her, but then, this is all obviously because Barry is completely reckless and lets her get shot, and Cisco doesn't trust Barry's new powers, and it's at this point where he's like, no, I've had enough, and, you know, he's risked his teammate's life, one of his best friend's life. And that's pushing it way too far because he is becoming really, really inhumane and like Sherlock Holmes, basically. And so throughout the episode, you kind of notice that basically the way that he acts is very different. And he acts like a robot. He stands in a weird way, he crosses his hands. He's becoming completely different. He's not a human anymore. He is something more than that, but also he's something less than that because what he's doing is completely inhumane. Anyway, so there is this jump, and we go over to Cecile, who has a tiny bit to do in this episode, where she has a small talk with Allegra about Nash and, you know, Allegra's insecurities. And so we go back to Eva, and we have her doing an interview, and Barry finds out at the same point, and you get to see her on the TV whilst Barry is basically finding out stuff to do with Eva. He realizes that there is something wrong with Eva, and so he does some research, he hacks into their system, Cisco couldn't do that, again, obviously exposing Barry as really, really powerful, and like his mind is just going overdrive at this point, and so he finds out that Eva is a mirror version of herself, and so he finds the actual footage of her death, and he exposes her, Barry exposes Eva, and Eva goes completely insane, like a shard of glass, kind of scrapes into the interviewer's face, and the interviewer is demanding who she is, and Eva freaks out, and she turns into the mirror version of herself, she shoots through the mirror on live TV, and this is all because of Barry, and there's something seriously wrong with Barry at this point, and Cisco sorts him out, basically. So he's becoming like a villain. He literally exposed her in the worst possible way he could. Like, literally, he showed a video on live TV of her death. Now, that must be traumatic. And I really think this is the point where you're like, Barry, you are the villain right here. Like, yes, Eve was bad, but what are you doing? And Team Flash acknowledged that, and they acknowledge it big time. And so it's at this point where Barry reveals they can't get everyone out, and he runs through some simulations basically in his mind, you kind of think it's real, and Team Flash is voting for who is gonna get out. Is it gonna be Iris? Is it gonna be Camilla and Singh? what's going to happen, because they can't get everyone out according to them, however, this is just in Barry's mind, and in his mind he knows he's going to be outvoted, so he takes it upon himself to do it himself, but he is stopped by Cisco. And so, just quickly going back over to the Mirrorverse side of things, you have Iris reuniting with Camilla, and they actually meet Sing in the speed lab, and he and they both get knocked out due to them being pulled into the mirror rather than the way that Iris got pulled into the mirror. And so there is some obvious big side effects, and by the end of the episode, they're literally just still lying there, and Iris is just there, and something happens to Iris, which we'll get to in a minute. And so there's something seriously wrong with the artificial speed force. Cisco reveals there's a side effect to do with it. And now the side effect, obviously, as we've seen throughout this whole episode, is the lack of emotions. Now, it's caused by this one specific thing, I kind of forgot what exactly it was. However, it does take away the user's emotions. And so it's much like the negative speed force, which is powered by kind of anger. Although it gives Barry the power of super speed thinking, he's able to think a hundred times better than before. It's affected the other parts of who he is and his brain, cutting out all emotions. And so Cisco is here and Barry at this point says, Singh and Camilla are expendable. And at this point you're like, holy crap, what did Barry just say in front of Cisco? Camilla is his girlfriend and Singh is their friend, how are they expendable? And you know something is about to go down at this point, and something does go down as Cisco pulls out his gun, his Speed Force gun, I forgot what it exactly is. However, Frost also comes out, Allegra comes out, 
and they all face off against the Flash. And at this point, you're like, oh my god, what is about to go down? And something goes down that was completely unexpected, and it was the best moment of the episode because Killer Frost injects herself with Velocity X. And you're like, oh my god, at this point, you're like freaking out. She is going to become a speedster. She is going to inject herself, and she does. And you get to see her juiced up on Speed Force energy. She gets the blue lightning, and it courses throughout her body. And then she faces off against the Flash. They run around Central City. You got Killer Frost, Speedster Frost, as we're dubbing her, and she's facing off against Barry. And man, what a cool scene it is. And then by the end of that fight, Frost uses her Killer Frost powers and her Speed Force powers and shoots a massive blast at Barry. Wow, what a moment. I never at any point in my whole life have suspected that we were going to see a speedster version of Frost. Now this was the coolest thing that could have happened and I'm so happy a twist like this happened in the episode. I think it's just so smart and it's complete fan service and I was just freaking out. I know you guys were freaking out. Everyone was freaking out at this point. So best moment of the whole episode, best moment of the season. And so it's at this point where they get back to Star Labs. And Barry actually tricks them because he was still ahead of them, even though Frost had Speed Force powers and was nearly able to defeat Barry. Barry knocks them all out using that thing that Cisco had earlier in the episode, the ball. And so he opens the portal to the Mirrorverse by tracking where Iris is, and Barry tries to force Iris out. And they actually meet for the first time, and you're like, oh my god, Barry's just gonna yank her out. And guess what? She gets sucked in, and she gets pulled out even though she wants to be the hero and she wants to save Camilla and Sing but Barry forces her out and now like we said before this is going to have big ramifications but no one expected this to have such big ramifications because this is Barry literally forcing her against her own will to do what is basically wrong like she should have stayed there if she could and she would have totally but Barry was just like amping up the power like sucking her in and so she gets through to the real world and she starts having a seizure and it's at this point he sees Team Flash all on the ground knocked out he sees Iris freaking out on the ground and at this point he finally has a realization that something is seriously wrong with him and what he is doing and so he shoots a blast at the artificial speed force machine it shoots out of his system this blue lightning comes out and obviously that's just a signal of the artificial speed force because it kind of is like Velocity X in a weird way. Similar to Frost Blue Lightning because that was Velocity. However, obviously that was like an aesthetic choice because she is a blue color schemed hero. But that's still what Velocity X does. It does make Blue Lightning. And so Barry shoots out Blue Artificial Speed Force Lightning. And it seems like his speed is gone. And like Eric Wallace said recently, it's a very artificial and temporary thing. And... Where is Barry going to get his speed from now? We'll have to wait and see. Maybe they somehow revive the original speed force. So the artificial speed force isn't a thing that is going to be sustainable because it has major side effects. And so then we go over to Eva and Eva says, this isn't my world. She is judging herself. She is sitting by the mirror. But then she's like, but it can be. She comes up with a plan. And so we cut over to CCPD. You have Eva who basically controls like an evil version of this CCPD officer and this officer is pulled in and it cuts to black and then you go to in the past and you get that reverse flash return scene where you see the original Harrison Wells somehow resurrected like he literally just comes out of the grave like with this green flowing energy and you're like what the hell is going on but wow what an episode what an ending and especially that speedster stuff with Frost, Iris is out, Reverse Flash, we saw a glimpse of him, and Earth-1 Harrison Wells is back. So much went down in this episode, so time to freak out. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment if you did enjoy this video. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my Flash videos later this week, talking about all these huge reveals because we're going to do bonus videos. Also remember, tomorrow in the afternoon around 
5 to 6 p.m. GMT, translate that to whatever time zone you're in, you're going to get a Superman and Lois episode 3 review from me. Then shortly after that, later in the evening, you're going to get a Flash episode 3 trailer breakdown, where I'm sure we're going to cover more about what happened in this episode and how it's going to affect episode 3. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it's been a long video, but hopefully you enjoyed it because there was so much to break down and talk about. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see